Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a few tips on how you can be a more productive sewer. Tip number one is to stop making excuses. I know this sounds super harsh, but I used to be the world's worst about this. And honestly, like the number one thing that I hear come out of people's mouths, especially non-sewers who are wanting to learn how to sew, and I used to say this a lot too, is they look at someone who is being productive or making cool things or you know something that you're kind of envious of and you say oh I would love to do that I just don't have the time <laughs> it's a little bit rude because you're kind of saying like oh I'm just doing so much important stuff and you're not doing anything and that's why you have so much time just to, to make these things the truth is we all have 24 hours in a day and while some people might have more responsibilities than others the truth is we all have leisure time and we can all commit a little bit of time throughout the week to sewing but instead we're not prioritizing it over doing things that maybe we don't even care about like you know sometimes you're just sitting on the couch watching tv when you could be sewing or you could be doing something else but you're not prioritizing it and really it it's such a easy way to to get out of doing something that you actually want to do by just saying oh i don't have the time and then just kind of casting it aside when you could be saying oh well i have 10 minutes i can go ahead and go pin something down really fast like i can go um do this while i'm uh, watching tv or while um, i'm waiting for this pot of water to boil like you could be doing something but you're really choosing not to prioritize it and you're choosing not to make the most of your time um because if you really wanted to do it you would be doing it tip number two is to find out if you're a frosting person or a cake person okay so what are the differences between the two a frosting person wants to make you know the frosting on the cake they want to make pretty items they want to make statement pieces these are things that um you can't really wear every day because they stand out so much right they're really pretty to take photographs of things like that a cake person wants to make things that they're going to be wearing all the time they're going to get the most bang for their buck out of these items they're going to get the most uses out of it the most wears so determining which one you are is going to be really beneficial to you in the long run because a cake person probably is not interested in making an evening gown or um, a really funky dress that they're only going to be able to wear you know ever so often whereas a frosting person is not going to be interested in investing an hour of time to make a t-shirt that they would rather just go buy because they would rather be working on something that is like a really big statement piece so determining which one you are is going to make you feel the most satisfied at the end of a project and it's really going to help you plan your projects better because you're not going to pick up all those basic pieces. You're not going to pick up basic fabrics if you are a frosting sewer and vice versa. If you're, if you're a cake sewer, you're not going to be picking up these, you know, extravagant pieces or these like crazy funky, um, you know, prints. It's going to really help you in the long run to determine which one you are early on. Tip number three is to match your fabrics to your patterns. So what I mean by this is whenever you go out and you're looking at patterns, you come across a great sale or whatever, and you're going to go pick up some patterns, um, make sure that you have fabric at home in mind that you can use or that you're going to pick up the fabric right then and there. Um, because a lot of the time, if you don't, your pattern is going to just end up in a drawer somewhere and you're never going to use it or you're going to lose or gain weight and then you're not even going to fit it or whatever. Like, the style it's going to go out of style and you know it's just a waste of money and a waste of time for you to even like go through the process of buying it and the same thing is true for fabric in fact i'd even say it's more so true for fabric because with fabric it can go out of style you can buy it and then realize later on when you do find a pattern that goes with it that you didn't buy enough yardage for your pattern that's happened to me a million times so really knowing you know which, which <laughs> pieces are going to go together is going to help you the most because otherwise you're going to end up with a ridiculous amount of fabric that you can't do anything with because you have no idea what to make out of it and it's just sitting in your stash collecting dust like mine <laughs> tip number four is to make sure that whatever project you're planning on making actually fits into your current wardrobe or your future wardrobe so for me i know that i'm not going to make anything that's brown if i come across a really cool brown fabric I'm not going to buy it because I know that it's not going to go into my wardrobe. I have a color scheme in my wardrobe 
and the neutral that I decided on was black. And so I know I'm not ever going to put black and brown together. Um, so I'm never going to make something brown for my wardrobe. And that's going to save me a lot of heartache later on because there have been times that I have made these orphan pieces that don't fit into my closet and then years go by and I end up just donating them and I never wore them. Or I only wore them, um, you know, with one item and they don't go with anything else in the closet. And so I get bored of it really fast because I can only wear it one way. Um, another reason that you want to know your wardrobe is because if you have a bunch of black tops like me, <laughs> you don't need to make any more black tops. So you need to be aware of these things whenever you're planning your projects. Um, because you really don't need to end up with duplicates wasting space where you could be filling your closet with, you know, a ton of cool, interesting pieces, you know, and <laughs> not 15 of the same kind of skirt. Number five is to know what you need. So if you are working from a pattern, then you are lucky enough to have everything that you need listed on the back of your pattern. So it kind of goes with the same thing about buying your pattern and your fabric together. One of the easier things, um, you know, to screw up on is not having enough fabric for your pattern. So you really want to know these things ahead of time before you ever start cutting, because there have been times that I've started cutting and I don't, I ran out of fabric or um, I would be up late sewing because I needed to have something finished by the very next day and I didn't realize I needed fusing and all the stores are closed and so I couldn't make whatever garment was that I needed for the next day. This is super important for making sure you don't run out of supplies and it's also really important if you are someone like me who, you know, the sewing instructions um, that come on a lot of patterns, they make them so they are accessible to everyone. So all you really need is like a regular sewing machine. Um, but sometimes I want to do things differently. I want to cover stitch something or whatever and you have to change the construction order. Well, when that happens, it's better to have read ahead and see exactly how everything goes together first before you do start sewing up the pattern because you don't want to get halfway through and then have to try and rip stitches out to make things work in your favor. So knowing your pattern ahead of time and really understanding how everything goes together, everything that you need, it's going to save you so much time in the long run and really just a lot of headache because for me, <laughs> on a knit, I really don't want to be unpicking stitches. <laughs> Tip number six is to learn how to manage your moods. So what I mean by that is if you are tired or lethargic, obviously you're not going to want to dive, you know, head first into the most complicated part of your project. You need to manage yourself and realize I'm tired. I don't need to be pushing myself because that's going to lead to burnout. And I need to just do something that's going to let me feel productive while not pushing myself too far and making sewing feel like a punishment. So typically what I do is through the work week, I will, you know, at work all day long. Um, and then I'm in the Texas summer heat in traffic for a long time. And then I finally get home and I'm just like beat. But I still want to work towards something. So what I'll do is um, I'll pin some seams down or I'll press something, you know, that needs to be pressed for whenever I pick it up next time or well, little things like that. And it doesn't seem like much, but it does add up to, you know, actually being able to finish your project in a timely manner. And the best part about this is that whenever you do have energy and you do feel like sewing a lot, you're past all the boring stuff and now all you have to do is like the fun stuff, you know, the things that are like more complicated and actually a challenge, you know, that way you're not challenging yourself too much on days that you really don't want to be challenged. Tip number seven is to assembly line your projects. So what I mean by this is if you're doing multiple projects um, to save you the most amount of time, you're going to cut everything um, all at one time and then maybe um, the next day you'll do all of the seams and then the next day you'll do all the hems and then you know the next you'll do all the buttonholes and this is going to maximize your time because you're not having to switch settings back and forth and um, for me uh, I had a serger and cover stitch machine in one and so changing the settings from doing an overlock stitch to doing a cover stitch takes time so it's better for me to serge everything and then cover stitch everything. And that way I'm not having to constantly go back and forth because sometimes it takes a really long time to adjust between the two. Um, and in that same regard, if you are following the same tip about the wardrobe, you probably have a similar color scheme for all your items. And if you can pick a thread that kind of goes with all of them, 
you're going to be changing your thread even less and then that's going to save you a lot of time as well. Tip number eight is to sew just a little bit every single day. So like I said before, you know, I would get tired at the end of the workday, I'd make those excuses, say I don't have the time, blah blah blah. Um, but doing, you know, forcing myself to sit down for just 15 minutes has helped me so much in being a more productive sewer and just getting more done in general. Um, you know, like I said, I used to say I didn't have the time or whatever, but everyone has, you know, 15 minutes at the end of the day most of the time. Like, you know, you can sit down, even if you don't, you can multitask, you know, you can, you know, wind down to your favorite TV show while you're pinning something together. Like, just working towards your end goal of finishing that project, even just a little bit, it's going to make you feel so much better and you're going to get so much more done than you think you are. Because 15 minutes of completely focused time, it really does pay off. Like, it can be more productive than an hour of, like, you, you know, being unfocused and not really, you know, wanting to work for that whole hour, doing that in small chunks, a lot of times you're a lot more productive. So, um, this is what's been helping me. And I find that if I force myself to sit down for those 15 minutes, a lot of times I'm sewing a lot longer than 15 minutes. Like I get into my groove and I'm like, oh, I'm almost done. Let me just hand this real fast or whatever. And what this is doing is it's, getting you into this rhythm and creating a habit of prioritizing, you know, this hobby of yours or this skill or this goal, whatever you want to call it. It's you're making it a priority at this point by forcing yourself to do it for 15 minutes. You're not prioritizing, you know, your whole day towards it or anything. 15 minutes, very manageable. It's not daunting to, to do or to think about. Like if you were to say, oh, I'm going to sit down for an hour and so. It's very hard to carve out an hour of your time, but carving out 15 minutes, that's nothing. Um, so this has been what has, you know, impacted me the most when it comes to trying to be more productive and really trying to manage my time better. This has been like the number one tip that I can give you that has helped me so, so much. If you guys have any additional tips, leave them in the comment section below. I'm always looking for new ways to make myself more productive and kind of hone my craft. Um, I do have additional tips um, to actually help you guys so faster, like physically so faster. Um, so if you guys kind of want like a sequel or update to this video, let me know that as well. Um, if you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button to get those notifications. And if you guys like this video, hit the share button and share across your social medias. But until next time, bye!